Hi! In this video, we're going to work with an edit form and change some records using the Entity Framework. So we're in the middle of a process to build an entire application that does create, read, update, and delete. And we're on the edit part, or the update part. So we have a method in our controller called edit. We need to get something by its ID number and then send it to the gadget form. So I think we already know how to do that. We have a delete function and a search by ID function. So I'm just going to copy this text and put it here. So this gives us a gadget item. So it says go find a single item that matches the ID number equal to the parameter ID. So this will give us, get us a gadget. And then I can just pass that into the form. So gadget is going to have the form updated. Now let's test this. It won't actually process the form correctly, but it should display it. Alright, so here we go. We got the application up and running. I'm going to show all gadgets. And then we're going to try the edit form. So let's try cigarette with cyanide and choose edit. And sure enough, we've got the edit form and it populates correctly. So this, this part of it seems to work. If I push the save button, uh, it does show the database, but I don't think it will actually update it. So if I change cigarette with XXX and choose save, it does show it here. And I come back to the list and it still says cyanide. Now I'm going to choose the create new button. And uh, oh, the application crashed. Let's see what the problem is. It says here in the validation, uh, we've got ourselves an object reference not set to an instance of an object. In other words, it's null. So I don't remember this uh, occurring before, but it's expecting a gadget model, and if it doesn't have any values, then the form doesn't process correctly. Well, we can provide it a value, so let's just go back into our controller. So let's go to the controller, gadgets controller, and the part right here is where we're working. So create, and uh, gadget form is expecting a model, so let's give it something. Let's create a new and let's call it a new gadget, gadget model. Now I could provide just the default constructor and that'll give it, um, what, what did it give it? If I look at the model, you should see the constructor. It shows, it'll give us all this. It'll say nothing, nothing yet, nowhere, no one. I'm not sure if that's really what I want. I think what I want to do is just get rid of all those nothings and let's create a bunch of blank strings, just empty strings and save that. So now let's go back into the controller. And when we create the new model, it should show us an empty uh, model. Let's go ahead and choose IIS and try it again. Okay, so let's go back into the app. Let's try show all the gadgets and let's see if we can create a new one. Okay, so here we go. Let's try the create new button. This time it doesn't crash and we've got ourselves a whole bunch of uh, empty fields. Now the uh, hidden item should have an ID of negative one. So if you want to right click and inspect and try to find that, you should be able to see the hidden item. Uh, also, if I go back and try the edit, I will get now the entire thing filled out. And if you choose the hidden form or the hidden item, you should see this actually has an ID number. Okay, so this here is the form. Now let's process the form after we push the save button. So let's go back to the controller to do that. Okay, so now the, uh, the, the function that we're working on now is process create. So process create is either for updates or for um, creating new ones. Let's, let's, let's treat it as an update function first. So we are going to receive from the, um, from the form a, a bunch of properties for gadget model. So we can get that and see if it's in the database. So I have a method here that will fetch this from the database. So I'm going to copy the example we had here. And uh, the word ID doesn't exist anymore. But we do have a gadget model. And we can do that dot ID. All right, so now this will fetch something from the database. Or will it? If it is a brand new gadget, then this should come back as empty, null. However, if it does receive some value back, that means it's been edited. All right, so the process of editing then says, we're going to check to see if the gadget that was fetched from the database is null. If it's not null, that means we got something. And all we have to do is match each of the properties to the item that came in through the parameter. So name equals name, description equals description. 
So gadget.appearsIn equals gadgetModel.appearsIn. So we're getting the changes from the form, and then we're going to type context.savechanges, and that should update the item in the database. So let's test this out to see if this works. All right, so here we go. Let's show the gadgets, and then we'll edit one of them. So let's try making this a capital cyanide. So I'm going to choose Edit. Let's change the lowercase to an uppercase, and then push Save. So it says here, the, the results are here. Let's go back to the list. And sure enough, the results in the database are also correct. Now, if I try to create a new one, and I don't think this will work, so if I try putting in a bunch of junk here, and let's see what happens. I'm going to push Save. And it says it's here, but then if I go back to the list and scroll to the very bottom of the screen, I will probably not see that yet. So it is not here. I need to go and modify my controller to make that happen. Okay, so now let's return to the controller and let's check the else statement. So the first uh, was to see, is this uh, in the database? If the gadget was there, then we'll update it. If it is not in the database, then we assume that it's a new one. So we're going to just now add it to the, uh, to the list. So we're going to say context dot, um, what was this called? Gadgets, there we go. And then I'm gonna use the word add. So just like adding to a list. And who are we gonna add? Well, this is the thing that was passed to us, so I'm going to copy him, and so we're going to add gadget model. And then we're supposed to save the changes. Now, I could put save changes, or since this one is already up here, I'm going to just cut it out and add it afterwards. So I have one statement to save changes. All right, so now we've got ourselves a uh, two different choices. We're editing, or this is going to be a, a new item. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, we're back in the application, so let's go ahead and show all the gadgets and then try to create a new one. So I'm going to try the uh, Create New button, and let's put in somebody. So I'm going to put in Decoder Ring, and a uh, lame example of a spy thing appears in what movie? I don't know, Nowhere with this actor was me, and choose Save. Okay, so it says it was added. Let's go back to the list, and where did it put it? Probably at the bottom, so let's scroll to the end and there it is, decoder ring is there. So we can probably edit that thing. And let's call this thing decoder ring two and save it. Let's see if it updated. I think it will. So the last item in the list again shows decoder ring two. All right, so there we go. We've got ourselves the most complex of the items. We've got creating and editing using the same form. So let's summarize what we've learned. So when we tried to create this uh, database, we first of all had to create these migrations. And the migrations would uh, either initialize the uh, application or to fill it with data. If you ever change your model, then migrations will allow you to synchronize any properties in your model with a table. So then the next thing was this uh, important thing called the identity models. And we had to add this line here to say, Part of our identity models includes a list of gadgets. And so that gave us the ability for the context to have the gadgets as part of its properties. Then finally, in the gadgets controller, as we've just been worked on, working on the last few videos, we had to uh, initialize a value called context. And then once we had that, we could reference things like this. We can say, give me all the items in the list, or search for a single item or we could do a search for a text that matches and create and delete. So there is the example of using the, uh, the entity framework. So you no longer have to create so many SQL statements. Your coding's quicker, or is it, you might think. And uh, also see the other video about the advantages and disadvantages and whether or not your boss will actually allow you to use the entity framework. So. Uh, check out some of the other videos that are in the playlist. You can see all things on how to build an ASP.NET MVC application. And I'll see you in the next.